What game is Lukashenko playing? Is he betraying Putin or continues to press to his tune? Is he going to go somewhere or not? And what kind of fight needs to be ended? He is talking about. We will talk about all this and more right now, live on YouTube 24. My name is Irina Uzlova, together with me is the deputy head of the Joint Transitional Cabinet, the head of the People's Anti-Crisis Management of Belarus, Pavel Latushko. Pavel, hello, we are sincerely glad to welcome you back to our broadcast. Hello, greetings. Lukashenko spoke with Skabieva's husband, Yevgeny Popov, a Russian propagandist. The theses of this interview, which we discussed for more than one day, have already appeared earlier, but today, unfortunately, we will not be able to watch, enjoy or listen to the full version. Let's briefly hear one thing. We will hear a statement about the non-use or use of nuclear weapons by Lukashenko and how the great geostrotag and politician, in quotation marks, assess the situation counter-terrorist, as Putin calls it, or rather war. As we see in the Kursk region, we are discussing. The danger is that this such escalation on the part of Ukraine is an attempt to push Russia to asymmetric actions, well, let's say the use of nuclear weapons. I know for sure that Ukraine would be very happy if Russia or we used tactical nuclear weapons there. It would be happiness. Then, probably, we would hardly have any allies left. In general, there would be no even sympathetic countries left. Because they are immersed in what is happening. And secondly, these are nuclear weapons. We have already formed a certain negative image of these nuclear weapons. So they want to push the latter. An opportunity to put Russia down. Ukraine will not do this. Here is the second one. Caution. We must see this, we see it with President Putin, that NATO can openly get involved in this, without even hiding it. They will enter directly in formations. The head of the Center for Countering Disinformation under the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine, Andrei Kovalenko, has already responded to the latest threats of the Belarusian dictator. Quoting Kovalenko, if we translate everything that Lukashenko said into human language, this is a signal that Putin is already literally begging for negotiations. Lukashenko's long speech implies that the goal of the NWO has already been achieved. He does claim that there are no more problems and everything else. Pavel, what signals did you see in his notices? Lukashenko in this case, of course, is on the stretch, once again he is in the splits. An old grandfather who does not know where to rush, what theses to pronounce. Very often it looks like verbal diarrhea, but when we talk about a person who still controls the territory of Belarus to a certain extent, and is also an ally of the aggressor and is an aggressor himself, of course, all this is sad. On the other hand, this once again emphasizes that they are not capable of using nuclear weapons. He lays down this option in advance, as if stressing that we will not use nuclear weapons. Well, if we use nuclear weapons, then it would really be the end of everything, and you would all completely hate us. This is really a message that they really need to sit down at the negotiating table and start trying to negotiate in this situation, which is critical for Russia and even more critical for Lukashenko. Lukashenko is well aware that Russia's defeat will lead to its abolition, removal from the throne that he usurped illegally in Belarus. But still, he thinks that Lukashenko himself is not yet completely isolated from the democratic and free world. He is now trying to find some loopholes in order to either demonstrate or remain negotiable, against which sanctions do not need to be tightened. What is he looking for for himself? On the one hand, he always voices messages primarily for the Belarusian society. Over the past year and a half, he has managed to form an image of a peacemaker among the large part of Belarusians, but this is a false thesis that he promotes, actually forgetting about what happened in 2022 and 2023. He is trying to show that he has always been for peace. On the other hand, he is under pressure from China and, probably, under pressure from France, 
one of the key countries of the European Union, which has presented him with tough conditions to de-escalate the situation on the border with Ukraine. And this was the first reason why Lukashenko then withdrew his troops, as it seems to me, to which Russian propaganda reacted very negatively, to which Putin remained silent, but Putin once again ticked the box, made a notch. And he will never forgive Lukashenko for this. In this situation, he is trying verbally, with his words, to play along with Russia again, to lick, excuse me, everything that is possible and impossible, in order to try to beg forgiveness from him for his actions that are inadequate from the point of view of the interests of his master, Russia. That is, he is verbally trying to justify himself in this whole story with the withdrawal of the armed forces in the subsequent clear offensive actions of the armed forces of Ukraine in the Kursk region, and when in fact he refused to come to Putin's aid, as we see now, well, at least on a large scale, he refused, and on the other hand, he actually framed Putin. I think that it will not pass without a trace. No matter how much he tries to threaten with nuclear weapons here, he does not control nuclear weapons at all. In general, is it on the territory of Belarus? Yes, the latest information that it is allegedly planned to be placed is posted in the Stoltsy district near Minsk. Infrastructures are being built there, about a battalion that is supposed to protect this facility. Perhaps this is the old base of the Soviet nuclear arsenal, but it does not control nuclear weapons. He is trying to say something on behalf of Putin, as if to emphasize that the two of us will make a decision. Even if we assume that Russian nuclear weapons, tactical weapons are on the territory of Belarus, no one will ask him whether to use them or not. But once again, as if his words show that they are not going to use anything, if they have drawn all the red lines in their heads, externally, informationally and nothing more. You are absolutely right in every word and confirms that Lukashenko is more words about something, some actions. The spokesman of our state border service, Andrei Dimchenko, in a comment to our colleagues from Ukrainska Pravda, responding to these regular statements by Lukashenko that he allegedly saw more than 120,000 of our military on the borders with him. He deployed additional forces to the state border of Belarus and deployed various units and various special services there. So, Dimchenko says that the situation on the border with the Republic of Belarus has not changed. As you can see, Lukashenko's rhetoric also does not change. The situation is constantly escalated with regular frequency to please the terrorist country, that is, Russia. We are not seeing an increase in equipment or personnel of Belarusian units near our border now. That is, to share neither equipment nor personal military personnel with the Russian dictator. The Belarusian dictator, as I understand it, is not going to do it and all this too, only in words. Or maybe, for appearances, something does pull me up. Well, he is leading Putin by the nose, it is obvious, he is just deceiving him, he is playing with him like a fool. The question is when Putin will react to this. Perhaps this game will be in the medium term, and not in the operational one, that is, not so that tomorrow Putin will immediately hit him on the cheeks or on the forehead. I think that we can talk about an election campaign, during which Lukashenko will try to reappoint again. And here in the deck of cards in the Kremlin, a card with a different name may appear, not necessarily Alexander Lukashenko. And the Kremlin already has a lot of such maps, marked. And Lukashenko should also be aware of this, so he is trying. On the one hand, he came up with these UFOs, unidentified flying objects, which he allegedly shot down while heroically defending Yaroslavl over the Mogilev region. He didn't even remember how much he shot down today. At first, he called 9, then 13. Today he is already talking, well, several, yes. They showed one, fragments scattered in the forest, which the KGB themselves scattered, because the grass was lying on him, even green, unburned. But it is clear to anyone, even a non-specialist in the military sphere, that this is just a picture drawn for one of the propaganda TV channels. Why didn't the Russians, who are Lukashenko's main allies, declare that they were shot down in the airspace of the Russian Federation? After all, there have been no reports from Russia that Russian air defense shot down those drones that, according to him, we transferred under control and which were then shot down by Russian air defenses. All these are fake stories with which he is trying, I don't know, perhaps, to deceive Putin. But then again, even if Putin doesn't follow his statement closely, there are plenty of those who are. And analyzing all these statements of Lukashenko, it is clear that he is playing with fire and this can return to him. Maybe not tomorrow, it will return in 2025, when he will attempt re-election.
Pavel, of all these statements by Lukashenko regarding nuclear weapons, the need to end conflicts and reactions to the Kursk NWO, which is successfully carried out by our Ukrainian defense forces, is he coordinating with the Kremlin or is he presenting one rhetoric in words, and the actions are going in parallel and separately from Russia? Here there may be a coinciding interest, and it is manifested because, on the one hand, Putin is interested in this truce, conditional in order to mobilize resources to continue the war, let's not have any illusions here, because if they were interested in peace, if Lukashenko is interested in peace, here is a clear position. Just withdraw all troops from the border with Ukraine, stop helping in the production of weapons, the supply of weapons to the Russian Federation, here you show your peace-loving policy. But he does not want to do this, he does not carry it out. Therefore, of course, they have a coincidence here, because they are interdependent on the results of this war, which they unleash together, together, one in the leading function, the other in the function of a co-aggressor who supports this aggression. Therefore, Putin cannot say it out loud today. Well, how can he say it out loud when part of the Kursk region is under the control of the armed forces of Ukraine? It's impossible. Well, that is, how to sell it to society. Let's make a truce, let's sit down and come to an agreement. It's impossible, but Lukashenko is doing this, perhaps on behalf of the Kremlin. Because they receive manuals regularly, they have established constant communication through the secretariats of the security councils. The information comes to Minsk, is put on Lukashenko's desk, and then he simply pronounces these theses and narratives. It looks like he's just playing the role of a puppet, jumping and saying whatever he's assigned. This interview is truly unique because even if we try to analyze it, it is impossible to make sense of it. Lukashenko are creating such chaos that it seems as if he is trying to play on all sides at once, in any way possible. Yes, but something works out for him somehow, wherever you go, everything does not turn out very well in his direction. Depending on China and France, to one extent or another, as far as I understand, from your words and from what is happening in general, Lukashenko is really found, and there was a similarity in principle in the reactions between Lukashenko and the Chinese, the aggressor and one of Putin's masters, China. Lukashenko's and China's positions are similar, they are essentially in favor of Putin, they are in no way going into the implementation of these statements and in liberating the Kursk region from Bandera, so to speak. Does Lukashenko coordinate this rhetoric with China or somehow behave more independently, or does he still call him? I don't think that Lukashenko agrees with China, he just looks at what China is doing, just tries to play along with it. There is no such direct communication that they go to the foreign ministries and agree on a joint narrative that they will release to the public. Lukashenko, of course, got into a very serious story, when in 2021 he signed the military doctrine with Putin, the so-called Union State of Belarus and Russia, it was then shown on the screens, they were sitting on the internet, and then Lukashenko, addressing Putin, said, well, I'm signing. Putin shook his head. Lukashenko replied, OK, I am signed, we will answer together. And this military doctrine provides for the dispatch of the armed forces of one of the parties in the event that the territory of the other side is attacked. Well, formally, as it were, it happened, yes. The armed forces of Ukraine heroically entered, well, this is the right decision from the point of view of the strategy of military operations, transferred the war to the territory of the enemy. But this is the situation on the basis of which, within the framework of the military doctrine, Putin turned to Lukashenko. I even assume that it happened. And I can assume that Lukashenko began to respond to him. Back then, in 2021, Lukashenko could not imagine that he would have to decide whether or not to send the armed forces of the Republic of Belarus to the territory of the Russian Federation in order to protect the territory of the Russian Federation. He always thought, on the contrary, that by usurping power, he would provide himself with a guarantee that no one would encroach on the territory of Belarus, although no one was going to, neither Poland, nor Lithuania, nor Ukraine. But he needs to sell this thesis and have some additional guarantees. He also needs nuclear weapons to guarantee his power, solely for this purpose. Well, here everything turned upside down. Well, what is Lukashenko doing in this situation? Well, he is a cunning beetle. He adopted this constitution in 2022, adopted a law on the All-Belarusian People's Assembly, 
And now the sending of armed forces to the territory of a foreign state must go through the procedure of the all Belarusian People's Assembly. So, he most likely said to Putin, listen, Volodya, I need to gather 1200 people, and my society is 85% against the participation of the armed forces of Belarus in the war in Ukraine. Accordingly, how can I convince them? The public will perceive this for me. And he hid behind, most likely, this all Belarusian People's Assembly. But in order to find a way out and still try to help Putin, well, at least such fragmentary information is coming. On the 12th, he sent the air defense of the army to Ashaluk. Will they purely engage in rehearsals there when Russia is at war? Or did they still close some square, some perimeter in the interests of the air defense of the Russian Federation? That's the question. Second, on the 13th, he sends rocket and artillery units of Belarus to exercises at one of the training grounds of the Russian Federation. At the same time, Lukashenko's Ministry of Defense, Krenin, is not informed to which training ground the rocket artillery troops were sent. However, it is reported that live firing will be carried out, that is, combat training. Perhaps Lukashenko is afraid to send calculations and, most likely, could deliver some of the artillery and missile weapons in the interests of the Russian Federation, while leaving his military aside. That is, he hid under this. He does not need the consent of the all Belarusian People's Assembly for the exercises. He can send. So Lukashenko will undress to his underpants. Yes, sorry, he will take off his underpants, but he will not want to send Belarusian servicemen either to the Kursk region or to Ukraine. But he will give up weapons. The last thing he has left is to somehow show his loyalty to Putin. He tries to demonstrate, I'm loyal to you, I'm yours, I'm yours. Don't take me away in 2025. Yes, of course, he has been delicately trying to pass between the drops in the name of saving his ass for many years, and so far he has succeeded, of course, completely giving up the sovereignty of his country and disarming it. However, he defends his one seat. Yari Kasparov, a well-known chess player, also analyzes this interview, which can be called a masterpiece in quotation marks, and, in his opinion, Lukashenko expects a big war. He draws this conclusion regarding Lukashenko's statements about what is happening in the Kursk region. Quote, All that the Tsar of Belarus expects is the moment when the empire, in quotation marks, Russia, will finally begin to fight for real. And then Putin and Russian troops will sweep away the Ukrainian military in the Kursk region. Well, we understand understand that there is more panic in his statements and actions, as well as in Putin's actions, than readiness for a big war. Or is it also just playing along with words? Again, we will threaten from here, as they wrote in the classics, I don't remember exactly whether they were French or not French. In general, it is necessary to threaten Kyiv three days before, and Ukraine will fall a few hours before we will march with the parade, when we will have lunch. Lukashenko said the same thing before the start of Russia's aggression against Ukraine. Today, by the way, in an interview, he once again admitted that the Russian army was advancing from Gomel. And he again confirms the status of his aggressor. Now he needs to sell this thesis again. Yes, Russia has not even begun to fight. But let them try to start fighting, let mobilization be announced in Belarus, Lukashenko, let mobilization be announced in Russia. What will be the reaction from the public? As is already happening with conscripts, we see a reaction in Russian society. This is probably the most unpleasant story, including related to the Kursk region. Of course, the territory itself, what came under the control of the armed forces of Ukraine, but the very fact that conscripts are captured when their mothers definitely do not want them. Of course, when we assess Russian society and Belarusian society, here, unfortunately, we see different relations. In Russia, after all, the majority is for the war and the majority is for Putin. In Belarus, the majority is against the war and against Lukashenko. But what can be a trigger here is when they really start sending young conscripts, 18 to 19 year olds to war. Here is a question for Russian mothers, they will go to Red Square, they will sit on Red Square, they will start knocking there, I don't know what, pots or something else and protest against this war. That's when it can become a trigger for the internal situation in the Russian Federation. Lukashenko is afraid of all this, everything. Therefore, he needs to escalate the situation, create verbal intensity, constantly demonstrate that something terrible will happen to stop, and so on. He understands that all this leads to his demise, to the end of his tenure, and then to trial at the International Criminal Court in The Hague.
Yes, they will sit there together, if they survive, 6,000 people almost watch us live. Friends, thank you to everyone for being with us. Kazakhstan, Ukraine, Russia, Paris, everyone is here, everyone is watching us. Let me remind you that Irina Uzlova and Pavel Tushka are with me. Please like this video, it will help it promote itself on YouTube. Ask your questions. Pavel, you say that Lukashenko will not risk sending his servicemen and it seems to me that, judging by the mood, the servicemen will not risk going. What are the moods that we should understand among both the military and the security forces around Lukashenko? Well, here let's be realistic. There is still a time factor. This time factor worked for the fact that Lukashenko was ideologically able to indoctrinate part of the armed forces. We are talking about special operations forces. By the way, he recalls in his interview about these battalion tactical groups, which are where they are, hiding somewhere, it is not clear. This, as you remember, do you see the gopher? I don't see it, but it exists, yes. So, where these battalion tactical groups are, he tells me, but they are there. If anything, they will definitely take the envelope out of the safe. He says that such a movement will begin that it will simply not seem enough. Yes, but if we are talking about the USSR, then in many ways they have undergone ideological indoctrination. However, again, they will not be able to act on their own, because even an attempt to invade the territory of Ukraine on their own will cause such a rebuff that coffins will go to Belarus. And this, accordingly, will stir up public opinion in Belarus. We see and feel this from the comments, from the information that comes from inside the country, and therefore Lukashenko does not want this. He is not because he loves Ukraine or the Ukrainian people, not because he does not want to help Putin in the Kursk region, because society does not want to. There is no merit of Lukashenko here. For him, the most important thing is to preserve his power. Sending the military means losing that power, or at least increasing the risk that he might lose it, based on internal processes, triggers, revolution, and so on. We cannot assess the degree today. It will be a small splash, a large and medium splash, taking into account the fact that Belarus has a totalitarian system of power, when everything is crushed, everything is under control, but in principle such a situation is possible. This is what he fears and fears. But if we talk about the regular army, then, again, conscripts, we see examples in Russia. Do you think that the Belarusian conscripts, who came from the anti-war Belarusian society, really want to go to war and die for Putin's interests on Lukashenko's orders? Why do they need it? Absolutely not. Therefore, it will be a trigger situation. So, theoretically, the USSR, yes, but only if the Russians are again on the territory of Belarus. They will not go on their own. And if we are talking about the conventional armed forces of conscripts, then this is generally such an unrealistic scenario. For Lukashenko, it will just hit back like a boomerang, very seriously. Our viewers in the studio ask why Putin is going to Baku. Yes, indeed. Why not to the Kursk region, but to Azerbaijan? This is not quite the right place, but in this regard, I want to ask you the following question. The CSTO, which Putin conceived as Moscow's analogue of NATO and of which Belarus is a part, has it shown its complete impotence, incompetence and uselessness this time? The CSTO is a collapsing organization, just like the CIS, which is also in the process of collapse, no matter how many times they meet. Even recently, Lukashenko gathered the ministers of internal affairs and tried to preach to them, do not abandon Russia, let's all around Russia, otherwise we will all be devoured. For some reason, he believes that the West wants to liquidate all the cis countries, yes, for these reasons, yes. That is, again, he is simply talking about his power, and he is afraid to be left alone with Putin, so he needs the cis. As for the CSTO, if from a formal point of view, then the country that has been subjected to, well, I repeat, we are all saying this not in terms of aggression, but in the transfer of the war to the territory of the enemy, in this situation, this country should turn to other CSTO members. Has Russia appealed? No. Do you know why she didn't apply? Because even if the very fact of appeal, it will show the weakness of Russia. But Russia created this CSTO organization in order to be a donor of additional, I don't know, additional security influence for those countries that joined this organization around Russia. And here it turns out the other way around. The main donor asks small states to help defend their territory, which is a humiliation for the Russian Federation. On the one hand, on the other hand, I think we can predict with a high degree of confidence that such an appeal will not receive support from the CSTO countries. Tajikistan may send something like wings, Armenia does not even consider this issue at all, and Kazakhstan does not need to send its troops to fight Ukraine. 
nobody needs it. Therefore, this organization is really close to zero in importance and influence. The prospects for the collapse of such organizations are obvious. If I were the West, I would now throw huge resources, we said this back in 2021-2022, in relation to all allies, all neighboring states, it is correct to say, in relation to the Russian Federation, and motivate him to turn away from Russia. This will lead, indeed, to a very serious weakening of Russia as an empire. This should now become a strategic task for all Western diplomacy, the leading countries of the world, to try to pull these states away from the Russian Federation. Like Armenia, an example. Moreover, it is being dragged away more than successfully and also shows the weakness of this great Putin's geopolitical impulse. Italy is with us, Odessa is with us, more than seven and a half thousand people are also with us. Pavel, returning to the topic of peace negotiations, which he seized on again, it is strange that this time without a map. At his other meetings with the security forces throughout the week, Lukashenko again mentioned the map. He remembered Istanbul. Lukashenko says that if you sit down at the negotiating table, a question immediately arises. The Chinese and Brazilians, for example, ask it more simply, well, they sat down at the negotiating table, where to start? And Putin wisely suggested, let's start with where we ended up in Istanbul. And Lukashenko says, let's unfold this notebook where we signed. Putin sent me this developed document immediately. And Lukashenko does not think that everything is over there, and most importantly, together with Bukha and other other atrocities of his bloody army. Why is he proposing it again? Well, no one will agree to this. Well, this is what is beneficial to Putin. That's why he utters that rhetoric. Again, he received his manual from the Kremlin through the Security Council and the Secretariat. This manual came, and he just repeats it. I think that with the many hours of conversations that they have, when Lukashenko meets with Putin, he receives this instruction, he has a fairly well-developed memory in this context, so he will say all these things. And again, this is all demagoguery, political demagoguery aimed at domestic consumption and an attempt to sell a false thesis to Western partners. Like, look, despite everything, I support the Russian Federation and even contribute to this war, but at the same time I am still looking for ways out of this situation. The most concrete action is to withdraw troops from the border with Ukraine. The most concrete action is to declare that you are stopping military and transit supplies of everything that contributes to the continuation of the war by the Russian Federation against Ukraine. Here you have your peacemaking position, everything else is demagoguery. But he cannot do this. That's why he plays like a chameleon. The color is one, the color is another, and so on. Sergei Mednik asks a question. Did the Belarusian people realize that restoring their power required armed struggle? I'll add, have Belarusian sentiments shifted in light of the ongoing Kursk situation? Well, it's a motivating event. That is, we immediately see the reaction of people, people, as they say, light up. The example of Ukraine. We have always said why democratic forces support Ukraine. First, from the point of view of justice, it is a moral choice. And if we talk about the political, geopolitical and foreign policy choice, then the victory of Ukraine and the end of the war, when Ukraine wins, create the prerequisites for changing the situation in our country. This is not a guarantee. Because the guarantee or conditional guarantee of change depends only on the Belarusian society itself. I would not talk publicly about any armed scenarios here now, I would not want to. But at the same time, of course, there were a lot of polls on the eve of the fourth anniversary of the events of August 9, 2020. And the majority of people, by the way, according to sociologists, according to polls of sociologists, spoke in favor of the fact that we showed weakness then. That it was necessary to act more harshly, more principled, and it was really necessary to use force. But what kind of power can the people have when armored personnel carriers are brought against them, when people are armed with weapons, with machine guns, and so on? Lukashenko today even remembered his collier, how he also ran with a machine gun. This is where the problem arises, the unarmed people and the armed forces. When Lukashenko, by the way, has already changed the legislation. He changed military regulations to permit shooting peaceful demonstrators without accountability. So here it is rather necessary to work to split the elites. Why is our team pushing so hard for an arrest warrant for Lukashenko? Because it affects the split of the elites. As soon as a criminal case is opened in the International Criminal Court, this is a very clear message to all those who are close to him, 
including the military. Are you ready to continue to fit in with him? Are you ready to hop on this train from Minsk to The Hague and go? Because we, Lukashenko, have already put the plane under sanctions on August 9th. He won't fly by plane anymore, right? Is that why you are ready to get on the train? It is also necessary to work to split the elites, and to prepare for active action. Walking with balloons is important, but it's not enough. Belarusians have shown great solidarity and unity, but now it's crucial to act more decisively and fundamentally. Because these do not understand any other language than the language of power. 30 political prisoners were released by Lukashenko, many of them have health problems. Yesterday, Pavel, I had a dialogue with our colleague Franak Veshoka, advisor to the leader of the Belarusian opposition Svetlana Tikhanovskaya. I can imagine, Franak says there are no significant names among those released. It is, of course, important that political prisoners are released, but Lukashenko seems to be doing it more for appearances. I spoke with Russian oppositionist Olga Kurnosova, who thinks Lukashenko may start releasing political prisoners to show the West is willing to compromise, despite it being more of a strategic move than genuine change. Listen, well, this is 2% of the recognized number of political prisoners. 2%. Now, according to Vesna, there are 1378 political prisoners, dissidents by 1474. This is for today. If we are talking about how many political prisoners there are, then this is only a quarter of the recognized. I recently had a conversation with a political prisoner who was released from prison. He said that of all those convicted under political articles, 25% received the status of political prisoners in our jail. Because political prisoners in prison are torture, they are mockery, they are rape, they put you in the first row. You have not committed a misdeed, but you are put in a punishment cell, you are decided in parcels, as, for example, Polina Sherinda Panasiak is immediately handed 30 kilograms of rotten apples or potatoes. And you won't get any more parcels, they do it on purpose. Therefore, becoming a political prisoner is also, sorry, another challenge for a person, he is ready to show his position. Lukashenko released 30, firstly, it is not clear who he released, the list has not yet been announced. He said before that he released 19 there, whether they were included or not. But again, in recent weeks there have been 15 detentions in Kobran, 8 in Brest, and 5 in Baranavici. Just the day before yesterday, a 63-year-old man was sentenced to 8.5 years in prison, as well as to the death penalty, for donating. Businessman, 3 years in prison. As soon as Lukashenko announced this information in his pool that he allegedly released or pardoned 30 political prisoners, it is not entirely clear when exactly he released and pardoned them, after the fact or in advance. A few minutes after that, there is information about new detentions. A returning citizen of Belarus from Poland was detained at a border crossing for participating in protests. And immediately there is a chamber of repentance, the recognition of Lukashenko as president and that he is to blame for everything. This does not stop every day, so this is a conveyor belt until Lukashenko stops the repressions, there is no way to assess it at all. Yes, it is important that he came out, we are fighting for the life of everyone, this is really important. If there is an opportunity to write an appeal to this person, write, support his release, because your life is the most important thing. But it is impossible to say that this is some kind of trend or that he is meeting the West halfway. Pavel, how do Western colleagues assess Lukashenko's behavior now? You communicate with European politicians. What do they say? You know, it seems to me that, unfortunately, there is this element of manifestation somewhere. Not that this is business as usual, but it is still better to have such a Lukashenko than Belarus, occupied by the Russian Federation. And this is a tactic, this is not a strategy. Because Lukashenko will die tomorrow morning, well, sorry. Well, if he dies tomorrow morning, what will happen? Until Belarus restores its subjectivity from the point of view of the people, it is necessary to rely on the people. In this situation, the people see that Lukashenko has been committing crimes for four years, but in fact for 30 years. Especially in the last four years, how many killed, raped, deported, politically convicted, tortured. And there is no responsibility for this. So, the people think, okay, we will go out next time, we will again be shot, killed, imprisoned, tortured, thrown out of the country, and this one will continue to sit, mustachioed, and the West will talk to him. This is a question for the West. I just gave a hard talk interview to the BBC and said that we need a powerful lobbyist in the European Union. Perhaps it could be Britain, which, although not part of the EU, could take on this case. Lukashenko must be held accountable. This is an important motivation. Well, there is some communication, but it is of a technical nature. 
There is no political communication with Lukashenko. Recent sanctions have been largely personal and harmonized, a key achievement we pursued with our Russian partners. There were several erroneous decisions, but in general, if we talk about economic and financial sanctions, this is a good package. Canada, Britain, Switzerland, and the US have imposed sanctions, and we've been working to ensure Lukashenko's entire fleet is included. Now he has a problem, the security service has a smut. Where can I find spare parts? Not a single Boeing service will serve its aircraft. Yes, he will still fly to Putin. But the further it goes, the more problems, right, security issues. Therefore, we create problems, and the West seems to support this approach. I believe that it is necessary to use two tools, maximum pressure and humanitarian communication, if we are talking about political prisoners. And in what other areas will there be sensitive consequences of sanctions for Lukashenko? Well, first of all, the Americans have not yet applied financial sanctions. We've discussed this since the early days of Russia's aggression against Ukraine, when Lukashenko provided territory. After all, the dollar is not under sanctions in its circulation on the territory of Belarus. Belarusian banks can only transfer dollars through American correspondent accounts in U.S. banks. They are not under sanctions. That is, it is not limited. There is a tough approach of sanctions, this is the closure of the border. Poland issued this ultimatum and began to demonstrate its implementation. This has led to a certain degree of reduction in illegal migration, attempts to illegally cross the border with Belarus. Well, for example, yesterday again 170 people in the last two days. That is, it has decreased to some extent, but it returns again. Because the illegal migrant is also a joint project with Putin. If he disagrees with Russia, migrants may be pushed from Russia into Belarus, continuing their attempts to cross the EU borders. So here the dictator understands only the language of force. I think that most Ukrainians will agree with me. Only the language of power, you need to show that we are stronger than him. And the West has these tools, but in this case they are not 100% involved. I often hear, you know, we will use an extreme measure, but what are we going to do with him next? Well, do not use extreme measures, but he continues to commit crimes. He continues to help Russia against Ukraine, and so on and so forth. I don't understand what they're waiting for or what additional escalatory actions from Lukashenko we haven't yet seen. This is still an open question, right? Yes, I don't know, it's such a long story. I repeat, this is a tactical perception of the situation, and there is a strategic perception of the situation. Tactically, they think that today this situation is still tolerable to some extent, based on geopolitical interests. But at the same time, they do not understand that during the same period, these few years, there is a massive ideological indoctrination of the population. Lukashenko's propaganda, Russian propaganda, changes are taking place, which as a result will lead, as I say, to the fact that tomorrow on the border with the European Union we will unexpectedly see Belarus standing in a Russian uniform. And then what will we do? Therefore, it is possible to invest huge resources, and I understand all neighboring countries, when they spend huge sums on ensuring national security and building barriers. Billions, if not tens of billions, go into this. But on the other hand, when the Belarusian society is not supported, when there are not enough funds for independent media and for the national identity of the Belarusian people, a problem arises, the manipulation and manipulation of public opinion continues. Who invests these funds? Russia. And it processes people. So tomorrow the fortifications will come in handy, it turns out. Yes, definitely. In order not to be too late, you must always do everything on time. Pavel, a couple more minutes of your time. Our viewers, thank you, almost 8,000 of us are watching live. They say and write that they believe in you and believe that you will return to a free Belarus. I think that you will also return the freedom of Belarus. Belarus is alive without Lukashenko. Did Lukashenko resign? Of course, not yet, but, apparently, sooner or later he is going there. Lukashenko himself says that 30 years is a lot, it's crazy, and as if he is preparing the people for his departure, claiming that people are used to it and that there will be no one else. But this is wrong. Lukashenko claimed the training is to prevent public disappointment and failures upon dismissal. However, I believe only a small percentage will be disappointed, most people will likely be pleased. What is Lukashenko really afraid of? He himself won't leave so easily? Well, that's all the rhetoric that comes out of his mouth in every election cycle. He says that he does not hold on to power, although with blue fingers, but he already has blue fingers. There are some grandmothers who come forward and say, we have only been waiting for you, you are our savior, do not abandon us, and so on. He plays like a coquette. No, I'm already tired, I'm fed up with this power, 
I have to get used to the fact that I won't be there. I'll live with you in the village. As soon as he gives up power, he understands perfectly well that without control over the security apparatus and the army, his end will come. And very quickly, before his eyes, it will happen. Therefore, the only place where he can flee will be to the Russian Federation. There is no need to talk about elections in Belarus at all, when presidential candidates in the previous elections are still in prison. What kind of elections can we talk about? Yes, that is, he has not yet released those. And the question is, will he release the leaders? Unfortunately, I am pessimistic in this forecast. He is afraid to field leaders. Therefore, the abolition of the regime may be the only way to free them. But I want to be mistaken and make mistakes, I really want everyone to get out as soon as possible. So, as for how signatures were collected in the presidential elections, because he fired thousands, tens of thousands of people who simply signed for presidential candidates in 2020. Who will sign for the new democratic candidate today? No one. People will be afraid. I have two examples. Two deputy foreign ministers, my former colleagues, one was even a friend as a child, and the other was a comrade in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. They were fired due to the fact that their wives signed for Babaric. Two deputy ministers of foreign affairs. Four wives will sign up. Yes, they will never sign. The media is not independent. The opposition parties were liquidated all, 11 opposition parties. He liquidated 1700 NGOs, all democratic NGOs. What kind of elections can we talk about? But he will be reappointed, there will be spoilers, who, by the way, are likely to praise him and say that yes, we are going as counter-candidates, but in general, we are not better than Lukashenko. The Belpol initiative suggests that the so-called elections might occur in February, possibly on the 23rd, a historic date for the armed forces or the Red Army. Lukashenko continues to purge society and intensify repression leading up to this date. While it's good that people are being released, this remains a deception, and we need to continue fighting and addressing each case individually. Complete freedom will only come after Lukashenko's leave, but we continue to work in various ways and together. Pavel, thank you for the detailed, professional, and constructive dialogue. I appreciate your efforts. Take care. Thank you. Pavel Latushko, Deputy Head of the Joint Transitional Cabinet and Head of the People's Anti-Crisis Management of Belarus. I'm Irina Azlova. Thanks to everyone for watching and commenting. Please like this video and subscribe to Channel 24's YouTube channel. Your support helps advance our discussions. Take care and support the armed forces of Ukraine. See you and win.